before I can really get into the the, the, the guts of guts of the talk, but why uh, should we put a, a brewery in Golden? Uh, I need to sort of give you a, uh, an overview and a, a bird's eye view of what's going on in, in the craft beer world. So <clears throat> we're all we're all familiar with Kokanee and Budweiser and Corona and Coors. These are these are beers that uh, I grew up on and. Uh, I drank a lot of kokanee. <laughs> but uh, these are beers that uh, the macro brewers are, are basically manufacturing. And I call them multinationals now because, as you, as you know, Molson and Labatt's were bought out or merged uh, a long time ago, and they're now part of multinational concerns. So <clears throat> the way these, these brewers uh, obtained their competitive advantage over the years was uh, by being low-cost operators. They were able to do high volume with relatively low margin, with massive advertising budgets, and really, at the end of the day, it was all very similar beer, it, it, because it, because it's it's what I call industrial international lager. <laughs> On the other hand, uh, craft brewers are pursuing what's called a differentiation model. It's distinct from low-cost operatorship because, <clears throat> well, first of all, most craft brewers are small to start off with, so they can only do low volume. But what they make up for it by brewing some really interesting beers that are really nothing to do with lagers. They've resurrected styles like porters, stouts, IPAs. They've liberally borrowed from uh, British and German and Czechoslovakian and Belgian uh, brewing culture, and as a result, they've come up with small batch, unique beers. And why why does that all matter? Well, it matters because this differentiation model is experiencing significant market growth, and it's happening at the expense of the low cost operators. This is a really interesting graph from the BC Craft Brewers Guild. It shows that right here's the number of breweries on on the uh, y-axis versus year. And you can see that pr prior to 1982, there were no craft breweries in BC. Fast forward up to 2013, you can see that 60 craft breweries existed in BC. I'm, I'm now reading that we're, we're actually, well, the, the BC Craft Brewers Guild is actually predicting we're going to hit 100 craft breweries in BC in two years. And they know that because there's about 20 new breweries on the books for next year. So how can that be happening? Well, <clears throat> the interesting thing about this curve is it's obviously steepening. What's happening is uh, demand for craft beer is exceeding supply. So we're seeing a rush of new entrants, and we're finding the existing craft breweries, which have experienced like really significant success, are, are expanding their facilities. Like big, big expansions too. How does that translate to market share? This is also from the BC Craft Brewers Guild, but you can see that blue slice in the pie is craft beer market share. In 2009, it, it was 9%. Remember, in 1982, we started off at 1%, or, and before that, 0%. 2013, craft beer market share is 19%. So in the four years between 2009 and 2013, craft market share doubled in BC. And it's all at the expense of that big orange pie, which is the commercial, or the, uh, they're calling them domestic, but those are really the multinational guys. The multinational guys are finding that their, their sales are plateauing or in decline, and it's because of the craft brewers. So the big question, if you're going to start a brewery in Golden or anywhere else in Golden other than the lower mainland is, how high could that market share go? Because you want to know that you haven't topped out and that we're not plateauing. Well, I think the answer is pretty easy. It's, uh, it's evident if you go south of the border to Oregon. Portland is, has been a hotbed for craft beer for, for 25 years or, or more. And within city limits, there's 600,000 people. And they've got 56 breweries. It's the highest concentration of breweries in the world. And 56 breweries, that's almost the same number as, as BC. Well, as it turns out, that, that market share for, for Portland 
for craft beer is, is verging on 46%. It's actually higher than the total of Anheuser-Busch and Miller Coors put together. And other here is import beer. That seems to be fairly stable. As we move north of Oregon up into Washington State, Seattle, I'm, what I, from what I'm reading, they figure market share there for craft beer is about 30 to 35 percent. So, and then we hit BC and we're probably about 20 percent in 2014. So you can see we got a ways to go to catch up to Oregon and Washington State. And I think we will catch up. We're probably about 10 to 15 years behind them. A lot of reasons for that, mainly because, uh, well, their laws were different. And we've just changed our laws to make it a lot easier for craft brewers with, with this uh, addition of uh, having a, a, a tasting hall. That's, that's absolutely huge. So you're going to see a lot more craft breweries in BC. Why is it happening? Well, I think it's got a lot to do with what happened in, in food, the farm to plate movement. People want fresh, they want local, they want taste, they want safe, and they want to have fun doing it. And all of that applies to craft beer. Craft beer, what, the number one thing is all the unique flavors and variety that you can get from craft beer. <clears throat> Not only that, but you can go into your local brewery and there's a real connection with the people who are making the beer. Like, you can sit down with the brewer and the serving staff, you can go through a flight of beer, you might, you may, might end up with an impromptu tour or something, something along those lines. That's happened to, to us, like, frequently. All you have to do is talk beer and you're in. <laughs> one thing about craft beer drinkers is we are highly experimental. We are not beholden to one brand. We like multi-brands. We like to sit down with six bottles of craft beer among ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking at grip with people. <laughs> Everybody brings one bottle. And uh, we just we split them up and we share and we discover new flavors and it's all about discovery. So why Golden? Well, it turns out, you know what comes out of the faucet, it's really good tasting water. The general rule of thumb is, if it's, if it's good for drinking, it's good for brewing beer. Well, it turns out the, the, the water here is actually quite hard, it's uh, got a pH of 8, it's quite alkaline. But that's, that's not a big problem, there's actually certain styles of beer that are really, really well suited to that water profile. And actually London, England and Munich, Germany have fairly hard water, and they're renowned uh, beer centers. As you know, this is a ski town, and no self-respecting ski town should be without a brewery. <laughs> Not only that, we're a, we're a mountain biking town, and we're, we're actually going to turn into a mountain biking mecca if we just keep building trail. That's what's going to happen. And we're also a rafting time, and all, all, of those, all of those activities synchronize really well with craft beer consumption. <laughs> we're, you know, just wandering around town and talking to people, we're, we're getting like incredible local support, and everybody thinks it's a great idea. Um, as it turns out, Golden is in a really strategic location in, in eastern BC. Because we're in BC, we can access the BC Liquor Control Board's distribution system. So that's province-wide. That's huge for a small brewery. The other thing we can do is we can head down the Bow Valley and access the Alberta liquor re retail system, which is all privatized. And the ultimate aim is we want to get into Calgary. That's our main export market because Vancouver is too far away. Calgary, as you know, is a, it's a pretty large city, 1.2 million. It's actually uh, the fifth largest metro area in Canada. And it's actually got a burgeoning uh, craft beer consumer class that's that's growing by leaps and bounds. We're seeing craft beer tap rooms, <coughs> craft beer liquor stores. There's there's growler stores where you can go in with your growler, and there's a selection of of 15 uh, you know craft beers to, to select from. Um, I, I think that's just going to grow in time. So Calgary to, our, to us is is a strategic market. <clears throat> It doesn't hurt as well to be on the Trans-Canada Highway. There's three to four million people or vehicles that go down that highway every year. And there's a high percentage of those people are tourists and travelers. And if we could divert even a fraction of a percentage of those, of those people into town uh, to the brewery, 
then uh, I think there'll be spin-off benefits for everybody in, in town. Can you tell us what a growler is? Well, a growler is a, it's a two-liter jug uh, with that you can put a cap on. That's a growler. There's also growlitos, and those are one liter. <laughs> so our, our business philosophy is, well, basically we're going to try to stay as local as possible. We're going to source all our equipment in BC uh, as opposed to buying it in China, which would be the cheapest option. But we, we want high quality and we want to stay local. As far as raw materials, we're going to try to source our barley malt from, from within BC and also Alberta. Alberta, as it turns out, has some of the highest quality uh, barley malt in the world. And a lot of the Californians and uh, Oregon and Washington brewers use Alberta barley malt. <clears throat> we want to differentiate ourselves from other craft brewers with our beer. Uh, we're still, that's very fluid. We haven't really figured out everything yet. But uh, we're also going to have a pretty amazing building. And you know, we think with the special events that we're going to have in that building, combined with the beer, it's going to be a pretty funky place to hang out. Sustainability, we want to be proactive in that regard. We want to be uh, as low impact as possible for ethanol flow and solid waste and spent grain. And uh, we're still working on that, but uh, that's a big one. And then bottom line, we want to be an integral part of the community. We want to do a like charity pint and growler programs where every month a certain beer will have a certain percentage of profits go into a, a charity fund and we also want to do maybe some special releases that are that are associated with uh, certain things that I'm really interested in like more more trail <laughs> just want to unveil the name and the logo uh, we, we like the white tooth name it's uh, resonates with locals and actually it resonates with other beer drinkers because uh, we've been toying this around to Montreal and the lower mainland and We've been getting a pretty good response. So it's a very minimalistic logo, and we like it. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Bye.